Hello everybody. Dave the caregiver's caregiver here. Five minutes of hammock wisdom with Dave. I was laying on my chase lounge, but it was so dark you couldn't see my face, so I'm standing up now. Just want to talk about today something that's near and dear to my heart. Don't give up. There were so many times in my past Oh gosh, things weren't exactly going well. <laughs> I mean, I've been in business now for 42 years. I've been married for 42 years. And there were two times especially that we were facing bankruptcy because, well, the economy just didn't cooperate. I was expanding my gas station business like I thought I probably should, but then something happened. Harco got rid of the credit card and started selling gas, 10 cents below everybody. And I was starting to hemorrhage money. And somehow I got through it, even though I thought I might have to declare bankruptcy. But I didn't. That goes back to the other thing I told you, um, that 90% of <laughs> things we worry about never seem to happen. So, I don't know if I'm just uh, blessed or lucky or, or have a, the right kind of temperament or whatever, but I like to think that it's more than that. I like to think it's just a choice, an attitude to, you know, just decide that no matter what happens, everything's going to be all right. That that we can choose to just not give up. That there is a higher power. We do have a destiny. That, like the Bible says, all things work together for them that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. I love the Lord. And I feel like I'm walking in my destiny. I didn't always, but I do now. And so things would just seem to turn out. You know, it's like the the uh, mystery movie that has a twist and you say how in the world is this person going to get out of this or you know the old-fashioned uh, thing where the where the villain ties the damsel to the railroad tracks and and the trains are coming and then they go to a commercial the cliffhanger you know but somehow he always manages to rescue her and call me Pollyanna or simplistic or naive if you want but how can you argue with 42 years of success? Because it, it just works. And so I would encourage you, and even in caregiving circles, of course, because that's who my main audience here is that I'm talking to, because I'm a caregiver. And there was a time when my wife had her stroke 21 years ago, and we just didn't know what was gonna happen. We didn't know if she was gonna die, if she was gonna live, if she was gonna be a vegetable. But I didn't worry about it. I had faith in God that somehow, whatever happened, I would have the strength to get through it. And now, 21 years later, well, my wife still can't talk, okay? Um, I would have preferred that she was healed, but God had other plans. And she is more amazing now than she was before her stroke. I'm more famous now and more happy now than I was before her stroke. Now that doesn't sound logical. <laughs> doesn't even sound right, but, but I don't know, I'm helping people now. And my wife profoundly impacts people who meet her for the first time. And as amazing as she was before, she's still amazing, but there's just something special about her now. And people walk away just profoundly moved. Many, many start crying, just, tears of joy saying oh my gosh this woman can't talk she can't walk she has a handful of words hard for her to communicate what the heck am I complaining about so she's a great encourager and I'm here in Hawaii this, we're on our fourth week now I know and just a couple more days three more days and we have to leave how sad time just went so fast you, you know, when you go to vacation, you just think that day 
that it's time to go home will never come. I can't believe how fast this month came, but it was a very productive trip. And I think about the journey that I've been on. A year ago, there's no way I would have even imagined or conceived in my mind that, that this would happen. That I would be on 20 morning television shows, that I would speak at Harvard University, that I would, uh, here in Hawaii alone, speak on four morning shows when they said that uh, if you're not a local, forget it, you're not going to get on uh, Hawaii television. That I got booked on three speaking events, one for uh, well, just massive, massive audiences. Um, 300 people, uh, one for 3,000 people where I'll do a, a workshop for 100 people twice and the third one was for 200 uh, medical professionals and I had to turn down another one because I had a conflict but when we come back we'll be doing that one as well but how did the, all this happen? Um, several things but one thing that happened was I didn't give up because many times I felt discouraged many times I says God is anybody listening? You know I got my website out there and I just keep doing blogs I just keep doing uh, articles I just keep doing uh, radio interviews, podcasts. Is anybody out there listening? But I didn't give up. I just just plowed ahead. Next thing you know, four years later, I've got four years worth of radio programs. I've got hundreds and hundreds of blogs and articles. And now here I am doing things that I never dreamed I would be doing. And it just, it's just, I guess they say, I have momentum and momentum is a powerful thing it's like a nine million ton train try to push that train you can't but once that train starts rolling there's no stopping it you can't stop it and you know think of uh, basketball you know when when uh, uh, Shaq is is on a roll and he has momentum you know there's no stopping him and so on and so thank God I'm, I'm so undeserving and I'm so appreciative and I I'm so amazed that it's me because we all have that inner voice that says who do you think you are that that people would come out and listen to you who do you think you are that that people would turn on your radio show who do you think you are that that somebody will actually sit and listen to you speak you know you just gotta say to those voices you know what <laughs> get lost don't give up so that's my message to you tonight and yes, I do have almost a hang hammock. It's a chase lounge, but like I said, it's hard to see me because it's so dark. So maybe you hear the Hawaiian music in the background and the oceans crashing. That's the really neat part because in all of this, I'm having loads and loads of fun. So God bless you all. Thanks for tuning in. And hey, Tony, how you doing? Lisa, oh, Lisa, I'm gonna make you president of my fan club, Lisa. You're always <laughs> saying, oh, can I have your autograph? You're just so famous. And I'm just saying, yeah, right. And James and Rachel Romero, take care of Jackson. I know you are, you're probably spoiling him more than we do, and Charlene spoils him a lot. So I'll see you guys later, bye-bye.